Today is Friday, June 17th, 2022. Welcome to today's daily prayers. As annual conference continues today, we again ask for your ongoing prayers for us all. Our theme this week is Christian maturity. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, renew our spirits and draw our hearts to thyself, that our work may not be to us a burden, but a delight. And give us such love to thee as may sweeten all our obedience. Help us that we may serve thee with the cheerfulness and gladness of children, delighting ourselves in thee and rejoicing in all that is to the honor of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this week is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, true life of heavenly forces. My very being longs, even yearns, for true life's courtyards. My heart and my body will rejoice out loud to the living God. Yes, the sparrow too has found a home there. The swallow has found herself a nest where she can lay her young beside your altars, true life of heavenly forces, my King, my God. Those who live in your house are truly happy. They praise you constantly. Those who put their strength in you are truly happy. Pilgrimage is in their hearts. As they pass through the Baca Valley, they make it a spring of water. Yes, the early rain covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength until they see the Supreme God in Zion. True life, God of heavenly forces, hear my prayer. Listen closely, Jacob's God. Look at our shield, God. Pay close attention to the face of your anointed one. Better is a single day in your courtyards than a thousand days anywhere else. I would prefer to stand outside the entrance of my God's house than live comfortably in the tents of the wicked. True life is a sun and shield. God is favor and glory. True life gives, doesn't withhold good things to those who walk with integrity. True life of heavenly forces, those who trust in you are truly happy. Our daily scripture is 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 13. And I'm reading from the message. So, my son, throw yourself into this work for Christ. Pass on what you heard from me to reliable leaders who are competent to teach others. When the going gets rough, take it on the chin with the rest of us, the way Jesus did. The soldier on duty doesn't get caught up in making deals at the marketplace. He concentrates on carrying out orders. An athlete who refuses to play by the rules will never get anywhere. It's the diligent farmer who gets the produce. Think it over. God will make it all plain. 
Fix this picture firmly in your mind. Jesus, descended from the line of David, raised from the dead. It's what you've heard from me all along. It's what I'm sitting in jail for right now. But God's word isn't in jail. That's why I stick it out here so that everyone God calls will get in on the salvation of Christ in all its glory. This is a sure thing. If we die with him, we'll live with him. If we stick it out with him, we'll rule with him. If we turn our backs on him, he'll turn his back on us. If we give up on him, he does not give up, for there's no way he can be false to himself. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Paul knows that leadership in the church is difficult and often involves suffering. He encourages Timothy to not give up in such circumstances, but to keep going, doing the work he was called to do. When have you experienced something in the church or in life that made you feel like giving up? Who encouraged you to keep going and keep serving God? Paul says that even though he himself is stuck in jail, the word of God is still free and moving and at work in the world. What does this tell you about how God works? If we remain faithful to Christ, all that is Christ's will be ours as well. That promise can keep us going when nothing we do seems to be making a difference. Take this time to ask the Spirit of Christ to keep empowering you when you are tempted to throw in the towel. Our reading today comes from Living Prayer by Anthony Bloom. A doll of salt, after a long pilgrimage on dry land, came to the sea and discovered something she had never seen and could not possibly understand. She stood on the firm ground, a solid little doll of salt, and saw that saw there was another ground that was mobile, insecure, noisy, strange, and unknown. 
She asked the sea, but what are you? And it said, I am the sea. And the doll said, what is the sea? To which the answer was, it is me. Then the doll said, I cannot understand, but I want to. How can I? The sea answered, touch me. So the doll shyly put forward a foot and touched the water. And she got a strange impression that it was something that began to be knowable. She withdrew her leg, looked and saw that her toes had gone. And she was afraid and said, oh, but where is my toe? What have you done to me? And the sea said, you have given something in order to understand. Gradually, the water took away small bits of the doll's salt and the doll went farther and farther into the sea. And at every moment, she had a sense of understanding more and more, and yet of not being able to say what the sea was. As she went deeper, she melted more and more, repeating, but what is the sea? At last, a wave dissolved the rest of her and the doll said, it is I. She had discovered what the sea was, but not yet what the water was. Without drawing an absolute parallel between the Buddhist doll and Christian knowledge of God, one can see much truth in this little story. St. Maxim uses the example of a sword that becomes red hot. The sword does not know where the fire ends, and the fire does not know where the sword begins. So that one can, as he says, cut with fire and burn with iron. The doll knew what the sea was when she had become, minute as she was, the vastness of the sea. So also when we enter into the knowledge of God, we do not contain God, but are contained in God. And we become ourselves in this encounter with God, secure in God's vastness. We grow into the knowledge of God gradually from year to year until the end of our life. And we will continue to do so through all eternity without coming to a point when we shall be able to say that now we know all that is knowable of God. This process of the gradual discovery of God leads us at every moment to stand with our past experience behind us and the mystery of God knowable and still unknown before us. The little we know of God makes it difficult for us to learn more because the more cannot simply be added to the little since every meeting brings such a change of perspective that what was known before becomes almost untrue in the light of what is known later. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. We need your power and your promise of victory. The world around us feels so dark, and we can get caught up in the sense of doom and failure that is all around us. Help us instead to know your joy and hope. We pray for places where the darkness is so palpable right now. 
places like Ukraine, Uvalde, Buffalo, and so many others that aren't even on our radar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who have allowed the darkness to ruin their hearts. For those who choose violence over peace, hate over love, and division over unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own souls, which can so easily slip into places and attitudes of darkness. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring us back into your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive this benediction. You have been in communion with your Lord. Go forth now in the strength and assurance that the Lord Jesus Christ goes with you. Amen. Go in peace.